Hello. Welcome back to Aiken pre-grade one reading practice. Earlier, I did part one, where I read the questions and the potential answers and read through the passage debating a teaching approach two times. Now, in this part, I'm going to go over a couple of difficult vocabulary words. I will paraphrase the passage in my own words, so maybe it will be a little easier for you to understand what's going on in the passage. And then at the end, I will go back through the questions and explain which answer is correct and why. All right. So first, vocabulary. Methodologies. So methodologies has the word method in it. So yes, these two words are related. Methodologies is defined as a system of methods used in a particular area of study. In this case, it's talking about teaching methodologies. So that's so that the methods that So if something corresponds, it matches. And last, categorize. To place in a particular class or group. So you can categorize fruits, vegetables, animals, different categories. All right. So now I'm going to paraphrase. There are four paragraphs. And I have paraphrased each paragraph in my own words. Sometimes I have taken parts from the original paragraphs because it was difficult to paraphrase them. But generally, I have tried to change the word order. I have changed some of the vocabulary words. So hopefully it will be a little easier for you to understand. I will go paragraph by paragraph, starting with paragraph one. In the past few decades, teachers who want to separate from normal classroom teaching styles have changed their approach to teaching to fit the different learning styles of their students. This idea is that students are better at learning when the teacher uses methods that fit their specific style. For example, visual learners learn information best when they can see graphs or pictures, while other students could learn easier by listening or by using their hands or through other methods. Paragraph two. Separating students by learning styles has become popular. 96% of teachers asked have said they think the idea is a good one. It is easy to see why this system is appealing to teachers who want to help their students. It is also popular with parents who have children who have trouble in school. Even if their children do badly on written tests, they could be picture smart or music smart, which makes parents feel good. As this theory has become more popular, many different styles have been found, and a whole industry has sprung up around this theory, meaning that many conferences are conducted around the world and libraries have resources that can help teachers who want to teach different types of learners. Paragraph three. Because this theory is so important in the classroom and is used by many teachers, you would think that it would be researched thoroughly. 
But there is not very much proof that this theory actually works well. Actually, re researchers have found that there are many problems with these methods to teach students by learning styles. Studies haven't found much evidence that people can be grouped by classifying them into different types of learners. Polly Hussman, an assistant professor at Indiana University School of Medicine, says that it is helpful to help students think about their own study habits. But she also says that there is a problem with the way that the students have been grouped. Paragraph four. Students seem to prefer and ask to learn through specific methods. But according to studies, it is important for teachers to make sure that the teaching style is appropriate for the material that is being taught. Daniel Willingham, a University of Virginia professor, says that the way they learn can't actually affect task performance, but having a strategy is a good idea. When you learn a new language, it is better to review verbally. However, if you study math, it's easier to study through pictures and visuals. All students are helped by lessons that use many different approaches because it makes the material easier to understand. A math teacher can get students to listen, read, and make graphs and diagrams to solve problems, for example. But many people believe that there are specific types of learners. And because of this, Willingham thinks that the textbooks need to be changed to match the real educational theory. The theory about learning styles will not go away until it is not presented in textbooks anymore. Okay. So that was my paraphrasing with some gestures. Hopefully it was easier for you to understand. And hopefully at this point, you, you are starting to guess at the answers to the questions that I read to you in the first part. Now I'm going to read those questions and answers again, and I will explain which answer is correct and why. All right, question 38. The author of the passage mentions visual learners in the first paragraph to one. Help explain the theory that including visual study materials in every subject taught at school is beneficial for all students. Two, offer an example that shows why presenting students with too many visual aids can weaken their listening and verbal skills. Three, Illustrate the concept that each student has a favored method of acquiring new information and learns better in response to it. Four, shows that most students want educators to keep utilizing traditional methods of teaching certain subjects. All right, so the first paragraph, the author brings up some examples. He talks about visual learners, also about people who learn better through listening, by working with their hands, etc. The reason why the author mentions visual learners is to show that some students might learn better through different learning styles. So the point of this mention is three to illustrate the concept that each student has a favored method of acquiring new information and learns better in response to it. Of course, later in the passage, the author says these concepts have not been proven. There, there's problems related to these concepts, but in the first passage, he's giving the, the background information. He's giving you basic information about this concept, this idea. All right. Good. Question 39. 
What is one reason some parents support the learning styles theory? One, it implies that their child may possess special skills or abilities that are not reflected in their performance on written tests. Two, it encourages their child to apply a range of different approaches when solving problems outside of the classroom. Three, it allows them to take part in their school's life, in their child's school life, even if they themselves have an academic history of performing poorly on tests. Four, it has been shown to noticeably improve a child's ability in subjects such as art or music. All right, going back to that second paragraph in the middle, the sentence goes, the theory has also been embraced by parents whose children are struggling in school. The idea that their child may perform poorly on written tests because they are actually picture smart or music smart is appealing. This means even if the child doesn't do well on tests, parents can still think that they, oh, they, they do well in music. They do well when they can work with their hands. So even if they are weak at tests, the parents are able to think, wow, they, they do better in other things. So they learn in different, through different methods. So the end, the end. one, it implies that their child may possess special skills or abilities that are not reflected in their performance on written tests. Of course, parents would like to think this. If their child gets a C on a test, but can make a clay model really well. The parent thinks, oh, wow, my child is good at this. And that, that's a good thing. Of course, you want to see the best in your child. All right, so the answer is number one. Question 40. According to researchers, the learning styles theory, one, has been misused by teachers who have failed to use it to separate students into groups based on their study habits. Two, could be improved by expanding the definitions of individual learning styles to include a wider variety of learners. Three, has been adopted by instructors in spite of a lack of evidence that shows such styles actually exist. Four, gained popularity only after data showed that its application by teachers results in increased academic achievement by students. All right, so that first sentence of the third paragraph, one would think that a method with such a significant influence on classroom approaches would have extensive research behind it. However, there is little solid proof that teaching to a student's strengths is effective practice. So hearing about these learning styles, there's a lot of information or teachers get a lot of information to teach to specific types of learners, visual learners, kinesthetic learners, learners who learn better by moving and so on. But there is little solid proof that this actually works. There's not a lot of research that has been done. So the end is three has been adopted by instructors in spite of a lack of evidence that shows such styles actually exist. Many teachers use this style. I use this style, or I use this theory in my classroom, but there's not a lot of research behind it. So there's not a lot of evidence. All right, last question, question 41. What point is supported by Daniel Willingham's statement? One, the match between the material being taught and the teaching approach matters more than teaching to students' preferred learning styles. Two, if the idea of learning styles continues to gain acceptance, there will likely be changes to textbooks on educational theory. Three, the connection between textbooks on educational theory and actual methods used by teachers is not clear enough. Four, mathematics is one area where teachers should make the effort to change their teaching style based on students' preferences. 
All right. In the fourth paragraph, most of the time with these questions, question number one will be from the first paragraph, two, three, four. Most of the time, but not all the time in this case it is. So in, you can see in his quote, people's alleged learning styles don't count for anything in accounting for task performance, but the effect of a strategy on a task is huge. That's what Daniel Willingham says. And in the first part of that paragraph, it says, studies show that what actually helps them learn better is for the educator to ensure the teaching approach suits the material being taught. So the answer is number one. The match between the material being taught and the teaching approach matters more than teaching to students' preferred learning styles. It's important that the teachers use an appropriate approach to match the material that they are teaching. If the approach completely doesn't match, if they're just having the students do something because they want students to run in a math class, maybe that's not the most appropriate way to teach. So Daniel, so Daniel says and to match the approach approach you need to use different strategies on tasks even if the learning styles themselves aren't thoroughly researched aren't as important you need to match how you teach with what you teach match all right so the answer is number one all right so those are the questions and answers for the passage debating a teaching approach for Aiken pre-grade one. Good luck with this reading section. If you have any questions, if you are still confused, rewind this video, go back to the beginning, listen again, and good luck on your test. I'll see you for Aiken grade one. All right, bye.